All right, good morning, everyone. I'm Brittany. I will be your trainer from United Way today. Um, I do want to start off this morning by letting you know that all of our practice labs are that we will be doing today are fictitious. They are made up. Nothing is real about these. No social security numbers or anything like that are real. We do have to say this um, for our training videos. Uh, second thing is, is um, we are going to ask that unless you get lost during this to hold the questions to the end, that way we can go over them. Um, we are just going to try to get, you know, going on this. And then at the end, anything that you may have thought about during wise, we'll go over. And then what was the other one that we wanted to state? Um, um, we'll show you later about the materials being from the training yeah, sessions on the, the website. The training materials and stuff we'll show later about um, where you can find the practice labs if you want to get a few more in. Um, our training sessions here, um, we do suggest that maybe you come in and take your testing here. We'll help you look over the answers before you submit the test. And then not only that, we also um, have double dual screen monitors so you can have your test on one side and your open book on the other. Yeah, so that also helps. So the tests are open book at your own pace. We do ask that you, when you go in um, to the actual testing site to have the answers written down in that 6744, that way you can just whiz through it real fast and submit it. As if you do click out, it, it has a tendency not to save and show that you failed. All right, so let's get going here. Um, the first one is uh, welcome to our basic tax preparation training here at Peace and sponsored by the Cash Coalition. An overview, what to expect as a tax prep volunteer, um, what to expect on your basic certification, important topics in the tax prep, topics relevant for the basic certification, as a reminder, you cannot take the basic certification until you've completed and passed the standards of conduct and intake interview and quality review certifications. It will not appear. So if you go ahead and skip past and hit on basic, it just will it'll be blank. It'll have nothing there. What to expect as a tax prep volunteer here at Peace Incorporated. We have legal protections for volunteers. That's for all VITA sites. You cannot be sued. You cannot be come after by anybody, including the IRS. This is their way of saying thank you for volunteering in the VITA program. They will protect you federally. Um, you never have to prepare alone. There's multiple pe people here that have been here for a while. Um, Ralph, Sharon, myself. Um, there's a lady named Taisha and Joy. They are also advanced preparers and can help you and are very friendly here. We work. We work as a team. Nothing's ever done if you are uncertain. Nice part is, is we are drop off site only. So if you have questions during that preparation, we can help you through it. Um, the basic test in your booklet, which is the 6744, um, the blue booklet here, um, and then the your answer, where you would find the answers, your like test book, I guess, or I, I wouldn't really, just where you find everything that you're going to be needing for the 6744. Um, that also is a little bit more challenging that, that, than what you'll see here at our site. Um, all VITA sites, you have to provide the form 13615, which we can help you print out. Um, that is proof of passing your various certifications. We do need that. It cannot be handwritten in. It has to be printed from the site. We have a tax alert binder here. It, if there's any new tax laws updated throughout the year for New York State or the federal government, we have a book here that you're able to look at each day to see if there's anything there. Sign off um, that you read the alert. Um, that just helps us make sure that you're aware when you're here, if there is anything new that you were, you're up to date. Um, Peace Inc. Re asks that if you go through and you do take the basic return, 
that you please do 10 tax returns for the community. Your return and family returns do not count as part of those 10. Um, we also, maybe you're just not, you went into basic and you're still not comfortable. You can also do um, intake and quality review and that would be great as well. We have a volunteer sign in, sign out next to the tax alert binders, which we can show um, here at NIDA. I'm not entirely sure where theirs are. So depending on where you are volunteering, please reach out and ask them. We get credit for in-kind hours and community investment as well. This is what to expect on your basic certification test. Um, you, have to, you have two attempts to pass. You have to have 24 of the 30 questions correct. We do suggest, like I said before, writing them in on that 6744, coming to us saying, hey, can you take a look at these? And we'll sort of kind of say, maybe you need to take a look at question 15 um, a little closer for you. Um, you have to complete those standards of conduct and intake quality review, um, like we had mentioned before, or the basic won't open. There are open practice labs for scenarios within this. They are just like one that we will be doing for the mock one today. So it will help you learn a little bit before you actually get into the practice lab. Um, we will return to the link learn taxes certification in a few seconds. I just want to go through a little bit before we get to that. So these, what I've done for you to help you uh, follow through the book, and that way you're not just um, looking for maybe information that doesn't qual qualify for what you're going for, like for the basic exam. Um, I have gone through in your 6744, if you look at basic scenario one, um, <clears throat> which is your blue test booklet, they like numbers in the IRS. Um, question one affiliates with filing status where you can fi find it, section B, page 12, in your 4012. If there's anywhere else, which I'll show you in a second, I will tell you how to look for that as well. Um, each scenario has it to the question. One through six are basically the same. I give you a section and a page number of where you can find it. And then we get to scenario seven. This is where you're going to do your practice labs, which we're going to do a mock one today. This is where you're going to do that for your testing as well. Um, I You'll see here, form 1040, page one, line 12. The 1040 is the tax return. You must do the basic scenario in order to find that answer because um, it's found on that tax return, which I will also go through today on how you can read it and be pre better prepared um, when you come in here for the IRS. Each one, like before, has um, each bullet, it corresponds to the question and order and where you can find it. There is three basic uh, practice labs. So eight is the same and nine is the same on, you have to do the practice labs to find the answers for most of it. Um, I do wanna say, don't stress. These questions and scenarios are more challenging. They want you to be prepared just in case. Um, here at Peace, as a basic prepare, they're not, they're not challenging, um, mostly W-2s and children. Um, so please don't get stressed, we're here to help. For returning preparers, we have done a basic update of tax laws, what's changed from the previous year before. Um, if you have not, this will be your first year and you haven't done this before, um, this is basically just for this year. This is nothing new for you. This is what you'll be learning this year. Um, we'll keep this updated as we go for returning um, preparers and for new preparers, just in case you want to have a look and see what those maximums are or if something changed. So the practice labs can be found on at Peace Inc., the website, 
www.peace-caa.org taxes. You can click on this and it's going to bring you straight to our training material um, for our VITA. You'll see that if we go down, interested in becoming a volunteer, you can fill in the forms for it. This is our training schedule. If you scroll down, you'll see each of our training schedules for basic and then advanced. If we go ahead and go back here, this is our training materials site. If you click on that, it'll give you all of our publications, our videos that we've made, and the course materials such as the practice labs that we'll be doing today. We are doing practice lab C. You can go ahead and click on that and it comes up as a PDF. So if you don't have Adobe or a PDF reader, please download one. And this is the practice lab that we will be doing today. So if we go ahead and do that. Um, so like I said, today we are doing practice lab C. Now this is a, a chart that we've put up for you. If you're just not sure um, on standard deductions, um, each person on here says single, Mary filing jointly, separately, had a household, qualifying spouse, under 65 and above 65. So it does give you um, percentages. Um, the only thing I don't see on here is disabled. I believe it's on a, the next one. Um, you get another credit for being uh, blind. That's the one blind. Determination of filing status tree. If you're just not sure if somebody qualifies for head of household, you can follow this tree. If it says no, you're going to follow the arrows. If you know that, let's say, did the spouse die during the year and, and it says yes, we have a death certificate, you're going to go to married filing jointly or married filing separately. In order to be a qualified uh, widow, you have to have dependents under the age of 17 or in college um, to be able to qualify for that. If you do not have dependents in college or under the age of 17, you would just file as a single person. What qualifies as a taxpayer to be head of household? This is extremely important as um, some people will try to pull the wool over your eyes or they just don't understand what qualifies as head of household. A single individual with dependents under the age of 17. There is an exception to this rule if the dependent is a full-time student in college, disabled, or you support them more than 50%. Disabled, um, you could still claim them on your tax return. You don't get a child tax credit if they're over 17 but you will still get how to, you'll still be able to qualify for how to household for them. You can claim a relative as long as they meet the requirements of how to household. There is that tree of head of household. You can't claim your neighbor's child. That does not consider how to household. It has to be an immediate relative, mom, dad, sister, niece, nephew, um, foster child is a qualifying one. So there, um, also, a married couple who has been living together during the current tax year does not qualify as head of household, even if they are filing separately. They must either use filing jointly or filing separately. This is where it slightly gets confusing, and we are going to have little cheat sheets on our computers for you. Um, there is an exception for married taxpayers to qualify for head of household without being legally separated or divorced. The spouse must not have lived in the household for six months of the year and have qualifying dependents. Um, some individuals have spouses that have, have, have been in prison, have been incarcerated, or um, they just took off. Thankfully, the IRS said, listen, if you don't know where they are or they've been incarcerated for you know more than six months of the year, you instead of filing together, you can file as head of household. This helps a lot of individuals that come here um, where the significant other may have just taken off and this helps them get a credit instead of um, losing credits, filing separately. If there is no qualifying dependents, the taxpayer not cannot claim head of household. Um, 
A person cannot also cannot claim them at themselves as a dependent. We do have people that say, well, I take care of myself. Well, you're a single person. You don't have any children or qualifying dependents. Another big one we see is um, married couples. Maybe the spouse doesn't have income and the other spouse says, hey, I support them fully. No, no, you're married. That's not qualifying for head of household. You can't do that. Um, this is filing status tips. Yes means go on. It'll tell you where to go. No means basically go to step four. And then if step four is no, then you're just going to follow it to step six. Oops. Um, chart B for children and other dependents. Either 65 and over or blind. This is very um, important. As somebody who's legally blind, must have documentation from a doctor who's legally blind, they get a extra credit um, for being blind. And then you have to be careful with the 65 and under 65. There's more credits for people over 65 who have dependents than somebody who is under 65. Married independent, oh, sorry, married independence is also on there. Um, and it explains, you know, the credits that you can receive and itemized deductions as well. Now, an important thing is kitty tax. Some people don't realize that if your child is working and they make over a certain amount, um, they have to report that to the federal government and they do get charged what's called a kitty tax. Um, another qualify what qualifies you as a dependent? We just put these in there for your um, viewing. It's also in your 4012. So don't ever think that like, hey, I lost the slide. It's in your 4012, which is this awesome book right here where you'll be getting your looking for your test answers. So what's next? Uh, practice labs. Additional practice labs are on our website. You can go through them at any time at your own pace. Um, this helps you learn the software. Our practice labs are still, they're still working on them, but our software through TaxLayer is up to date, current, and is A-OK. -okay. Um, we've already been in there. You can review our viewed videos of past trainings on YouTube. And then visit our site and work on or work on them there. You can come in, use our dual monitors. We'll help you if you have questions. Um, so you have to take your certifications, your first two standards of contact, conduct, intake, interview, and quality review, and then basic certification. Contact a VITA site where you plan to volunteer. Um, you can call, volunteer at Peace here. You can go to NIDA 1199 or Syracuse University. Those are our, our big ones here. And, I, and now we are going to go to that link, learntaxescertification.com. We're gonna get into that quick links practice lab. And you should be here. The password in all caps is train, like the choo choo train, pro, web. And that is also in your test booklet. It, in the front, it tells you um, the, the password. So, no thanks. This is uh, my coworker, Sharon. So, I'm going to get her out of here. So, last year, even though this is a new vendor, if you ha were here last year, you can go ahead and put your username in and then just say you forgot your password because it, it does need you to update your password. If you're new, you're just going to hit that create account. This is a lot simpler than um, when you signed in to register for your testing. Uh, it's not as complicated. So I already have an account. If you can go ahead, I'll give everybody a few minutes to sign in here. Oh, your cat blocks are gone. 
you were already on there. I already got you in. Yeah, but no. Oh, it did? Okay. It timed out probably. Do you want to go help her with mm -hmm. this? Because it's it goes to the actual tax layer pro site when it kicks you out. Oh, the old one? Mm-hmm. Katie, um, you have to register. You don't have one. So it says it right there, create account. Just give us one more second online here. If you're joining online, we have a few people just registering here. Yours. Give me a second. Here you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she has one. It's the really long password. Okay. Well, yeah, fifteen. Fifteen, whatever. Yeah. I think it started out 12 and then he bumped it up. I think it's to prevent stealing. I don't think it's a big problem. Oh. <clears throat> just give us a few more minutes. We got um, one person, two people actually just getting their accounts created. That way we can go ahead with this. Okay. Yep, go to practice lab. Yep. And it should bring you to that. Yeah, right in that way. Yep. You don't need to know about that. Okay. Did you, did you, you already you Oh, you're in the practice lab. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. They're just finishing up here, so just give us one more second, Bob. Now go to the practice lab right there. Are you are you in Joyce okay? Yeah, she's okay. Okay. All right, so we're gonna get going here. So we are doing that practice tax basics um C here. So we're going to go ahead and hit select start new 2023 tax return. For Claudia, we're going to go ahead and make up a social security number. Try to use as many zeros as possible. That way um, it remains fictitious. So you can do like 800, 800. Nobody's, at least I think nobody has that. I think they have to have a bunch of numericals in them for social security cards. And then once you do that, go ahead and hit start return. You're going to make up one. So do like 800-8000. And then have it. Yep. Oh, you got to do something. You can use four and zero. And then it'll be, it's going to be snatched and six like that. You have to verify the social security twice. Um, I do, I don't know how this happens, but sometimes people put the driver's license ID number in there and it actually goes because it ends up being the same amount of numbers. So please just make sure you're pulling it from the social security card, not from their driver's license. Um, I have seen it happen before, but mistakes happen. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, read this practice lab real fast so that way um, we can get going. So Claudia Cardinal is a principal in the Syracuse School District. Her spouse, Rufus Cardinal, Cardinal 
has left and has not lived in the household for the last eight months of 2023. She wished to contribute to the presidential election campaign fund. She paid $242 out of pocket for her school student fare. She is studying online to finish her doctorate degree in education. She paid her, all her expenses out of pocket. She had receipts from two ch different child care center cares in 2023 for Abby and Angel. She paid $24,000 to the Jewish Community Center. It has the EIN number, where they're located, and the phone number. For Marie, she paid $7,200 to Baskell Daycare Center Services. It has the EIN number, where they're located, and the phone number, which is important for um, when we go and fill this out. Claudia made a donation by check of $250 to the United Way of Central New York. Her house taxes are included for the county and school and a star credit of $680. Claudia's children are listed with so fictitious social security numbers and she prefers to have a paper check mailed to her. So we're gonna go ahead and um, do filing status. For Claudia, even though she's married, she makes that um, exception for head of household because her spouse was out of the home for six months of the year. So she can claim head of household instead of married filing jointly or separately. So we're gonna go ahead and hit continue. For those that are here, if you flip the page, you're gonna see that 13614-C, that yellow form in person, it'll be yellow. You're basically gonna take her her personal information and start putting it in. This is data, simple data entry, just start making sure that her name is in there, her birthday, her occupation, and then we will go from there. So her name is Claudia in box one. Before you move to address, just please wait for me there right after you put the occupation in because there's a little step that we have to do beforehand. She's a principal. All right, so it did say that Claudia um, wanted to donate to the presidential fund. So if you can see on my screen here, there's a bunch of boxes. Right down here, it says taxpayer wishes to contribute to the $3 presidential election fund. You're gonna click that box for me. So this is where if, um, somebody wants written communications um, from the IRS if they're over the taxpayers over 18 is in, in and is in college if they're legally blind this is where we would click that box um this is just lets us know about the taxpayer so you can go ahead and scroll down and enter the address um that is found on that first page of your uh yellow form here. So it's going to be 2.30. And you can abbreviate. Like South, you can put S. South, Salina, Street, ST for Street. And then go ahead. It's going to be 13202. And you're going to notice that it auto-populates. Just make sure that if it does auto-populate, that you make sure that the city, the state are correct. And then the phone number on this one is 315-471-6677. She does have an alternative phone number you can call. So you can put that in there as well. Some people will provide an email address, which you'll find on line 12. Um, that's where the primary client email will go. 
I do ask you not to invite a customer portal um, for their tax return. We don't really do that here. We we have them come in and sign it and approve it. Um, so that way we can e-file it out. Um, so please do not put an invite to the customer portal. Just put it on the primary client email if one is provided. Are you guys all set? Okay. I'll give a few minutes for everybody to catch up. One three two. Wait, there are one more, and then we'll hit continue. No. Nope. All right. So now that you guys are all caught up in here on that, we'll hit continue now. You're going to see dependents are qualifying persons. We do know that she has three dependents. So we're going to go ahead and hit, do you have dependents? Yes. And hit continue. So you're gonna go ahead and at the bottom of the page right here on the three uh one three six one four C, you see their names, their birthdays, who they are in relationship, how many months they lived in the home, and any qualifying information for the tax return if they're a student or not. Do remember that the social security numbers, the fictitious social security numbers are on the front, so you do have to do a little bit of flipping. You're going to hit yes, this was an individual of a U.S. citizen or national or resident alien to claim the child tax credit. You're gonna drop this bar down and hit daughter because she is a daughter to them during the home for 12 months. This is if the person was in college um, or disabled, or let's say like you wanna put your child on the tax return and you have a custody agreement um, that you claim the child one year and the other, your, your, the other person, the father or mother, claims the child the next year, you would just click this if it's not your year. Um, if they made over the $4,700 worth of income, that's where you would also click it. But for this case, there is none. So there's two ways that you can do this. You can go ahead and hit save and enter another to enter another dependent, or you can hit continue. Let's say you hit continue. There's this awesome little button up top that says add a dependent or qualifying child. I prefer doing it this way so it doesn't, if you hit save and enter another, it has a tendency to yell at you with little red flags and asterisks all over the place. Um, I just like doing it this way so I make sure that I'm getting each qualifying child. You can do save and enter. Just know it's gonna red. You you have to scroll back to the top, and it's gonna red flag you. Just enter the new the next person in. It are it saved it. It just it yells at the system yells at you a little. Because they think something's wrong, but it's okay.
was a dependent. You can go ahead and just keep on going if, um, just keep on going there for us until you have each one put in and then I will hold to let everybody catch up. Please make sure that each child has the same last name. In this scenario, they do. But in other scenarios and in real life, you may come across that the mom and children have different names, that maybe the mom and one child has um, the same last name, but the other child has a different last name. So it's very important to pay attention to the last names because it does auto-populate. They are a citizen, and this is her son. And I'm going to go ahead and click continue and get out to the main page once all three are, are done. Once you put all three in, instead of saying save and enter, you're just going to hit continue at the bottom. Okay. Okay. Check with Bob. Uh, Bob, are you doing good over there on that end? Yes, because your child is actually still in your care, even though they're kidnapped until they're declared legal. They have to be like 10 years, either legally dead or 10 years missing. I'm finishing up the last dependent. Okay, perfect. Great. Thank you. So I just wanted to take a quick second here and show that awesome folder that you've seen in the intake quality standards of conduct. The information is going to be in here. What you're looking at right now, we basically copied and just made fictitious stuff for our practice labs for training for you guys. But everything that you see today is going to be in that folder. And it's going to follow the same format as if you were doing an actual tax return. So that I just wanted to take a quick second and let you know that it's going to look a little bit different here. But it's the same forms. It's just inside a folder. It's not online or anything. <laughs> is everybody all set with the children okay so if you if you go ahead and hit that continue button at the right here everything that has says hit continue is basically like moving forward uh, it it takes a lot for this so it go goes back to the dependence menu you're going to go ahead and hit continue so this is basic information. In this, in, in this scenario, we don't have anybody with an identity pen from the federal government. They send it in December. But let's say you did have somebody with an ID pen. You're going to click on that um, bottom one, the last one. It says, uh, oops, I got to go back to basic information here. Apologize for that. IRS ID protection pin. So you would just, let's say like Abby has one because her information was leaked. You would just go ahead and go in there and put that under Abby only. Each person gets their own ID pin. So if they don't bring you one, you have to assume they don't have one. So that's that. Since they don't have it, we're going to go ahead and hit cancel. And it's going to bring you to our income section. So if you go ahead past the the 13614-C, they are back in front here. So we're going to go to the first W-2 here. <clears throat> and it should say Syracuse City School District. So right here at the top, it says uh, W-2. You're going to go ahead and click on that. 
<clears throat> so right here, it says employer identification number. That's the EIN. You're on your W-2. You're going to see that in box B. That number we're going to go ahead and put in. It's 15601011. Now, it pops up, it auto-populated because it's the Syracuse School District. This is where she worked. I would like you to please just make sure that everything is correspondent to addresses for them on the W-2. I am not worried about the taxpayer's address because people move all the time, but the employer identification number needs to be the same and the address, it needs to correspond. <clears throat> so if you if you scroll down a little here, you're gonna see a bunch of uh, boxes. One um, that show up on your page, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. It goes all the way through 14 um, on, this section, on the IRS section. This is basically data entry. You're just gonna follow the boxes. So it says 61000, so she made 61,000 through her job. You're gonna go over here to box two. It says federal income taxes withheld. You have to put that in. So 2440. So this is where that auto population comes in. And we see in box three that it's different. So we're gonna go ahead and click in that box. It'll highlight it. And you're just gonna put the correct amount of 58,500. So 58,500. If you click outside the box, you will see box four automatically changes to match social security tax withheld of the $3,627. Box five needs to also be changed to 58,500. And you're going to click outside the box. In box six, just please make sure that it matches the 848. Here it says 848.25. That's okay. Our system will automatically round it down. Or you can just click on it and change it to the 848. It's a round up, round down system. Anything uh, 49 cents and down, you round down. 50 cents and higher, you round up. So has everybody put in the boxes so far? Okay, it's, it's basic data entry. Um, so box 12, you're gonna drop down and hit D and put the amount of 2,500. Your codes, we're gonna have the codes here, what D, D, D means, um, A, B, W, um, what they correspond to. They're on the back of your W-2. Um, and it tells you what you've contributed to throughout the tax year. If you have a health health savings account, is a W, uh, disability, um, 401k, there's different codes for different meanings, health insurance. You're gonna see in box 13 that they do have a retirement plan. So you're gonna click that box. You're gonna scroll to box 14. So NYSDI, um, it's technically the non-occupancy disability fund. Um, so that New York SDI is non-occupancy -oc disability fund. Um, we're going to put that up as well. So that's going to be 31. And then we're going to add another one, which is the NYPFL. If there is no correspondent, to to it it's other problem is is you might have three or four different codes in there um if you can't let's say like three of them have no correspondence it's under other you're going to add those three up and just put it under other um they don't allow more than one other unfortunately so you just have to add them together 
<clears throat> state information is obviously your state, New York State, which you will see on your practice labs. Um, in the on the W twos, it'll say Y S. That means your state, the state that you live in, because this is the IRS. Um, they have it broadly across all fifty states. So anytime you don't see a code in that box 14, it is other, except for that SDI, which I explained is the non-occupancy disability fund. Um, like I said, here we will have codes, but if you don't see it on there, it's other. If there's more than one other, you have to add them together. Sorry for getting up, by the way. I had to go help someone. So you'll see that I might get up once in a while. So your box 14 should look like this up on the screen. We're just waiting for some people to catch up. Okay. So you're going to scroll down to your state, put New York. It will auto-populate the wages, but you still have to put in the EIN which is the employer state ID number, which is the 15601158. Um, so one thing I do wanna mention is sometimes the state EIN and the IRS's EIN doesn't match. So please make sure that you're checking the ID numbers or the EIN numbers. Um, because it's not always the same. So if it says New York and then ID number, just make sure that you're putting that ID number in. I have come across some of them that are different, um, especially if it's like uh, California, you're paying taxes here in New York State, they have a different ID than the IRS. So because the Uber or Grubhub or something is located in a different state. So just please make sure. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um, the state income is the t that, and then taxes is one two two zero. You're gonna go scroll down, and there is no more W twos for this. But if there was, there was, you can go ahead and hit save and enter another. But since there's not, we're gonna hit continue. Let's say you say, "Oh crap, I missed one." You can go to the top here and it says add a W-2 wage statement that you can add there too. Do you just click on it? Or, and let's say, oh, oh, I don't think I put in a number right. You can always edit it. You just hit that little pencil looking thing and you can go in there and edit any information that you need to edit within the tax return. So now that your W-2 is filled in, you're gonna hit continue. Is everybody caught up to this point? Okay, so we should be at the main page of income again. Now, most of your forms for income are gonna be found on the first page. So the third one that we're looking for, it's gonna be the third one down is 1099 INT. But let's say, oh, I can't, I can't find it. I've looked and I've looked and I've looked. Up on the left-hand side, you'll see what's called a form finder. If you go ahead and go in there and you put 
1099-INT, it is going to pull up the form that you need. You can click on it and it will immediately bring you to the page that you need to be on. I like it, especially um, if I am doing a few different things or like I'm in the middle of an HSA, I can just go up there and make sure that I use that form finder and um, get that HSA right out of the way. So the next form, which is on the next page, is your 1099-INT, which is a bank interest income. You're going to go ahead and fill it out. So it's Chase Bank. The payer's TIN is, which is your EIN or ID number for the federal government. One, three, two, six, two, four, four, two, eight. It's the United States of America. The street address is 213 South Salina Street. And the zip code is 13202. It sort of kind of follows the same thing as like, let's say um, a W-2, you just follow along with the boxes. Most people don't have bonds here to have interest on them. So this 1099 interest statement is mostly going to be from the bank. For this one, in this case scenario, she does have interest on a U.S. savings bond. So we're going to put the interest of $213 in there in box three. Right here. And we're just going to scroll down so, until we see state withholding. So you'll, you won't see on most of these state withholding because a lot of people don't pay taxes on it. They don't do anything like that. So what we need to do is just put New York State in there. Um, if you scroll down, New York. And the state identification number for this is going to be the same as the payers 10. It's 13262442228. And that's all we have to do. But let's say you forget to put the state withholding there. Um, it should red flag you to put a state in, but let's say it lets you go through. The system will automatically cal calculate it for your state um, taxes. Um, right now, like I said, the practice lab is uh, still in works. So we have to add the state in, which I'll show you how to do. Um, but typically here in our program, you'll already have this information in. You don't have to put anything in box one, it's box three which is up top, it's 213 because she has an interest on savings bond. But if you scroll down to state withholding one, it needs to say New York and the state identification. But typically in for a 1099 INT, box one will be filled in at least for our, you know, our clients. That's just using regular bank interest. Typically, we don't see a lot of interest on savings bonds in our VITA programs. If everybody's okay, we can just go ahead and hit continue because there's no other information. She didn't have any taxes withheld on it. We're going to hit continue again once you get to that interest and dividends. It brings you back to the main part of it and just hit continue again. It's a lot of continuing, unfortunately. Because there's different forms under different schedules. So next is our 1099-R. This is um, from pension. She, it looks like she took an early um, distribution from her pension. What I'm going to do is right here, uh, it's line four here. You can also use that awesome form finder up here. 
You're going to go ahead and click begin. You're going to do that top one right here and go, hit begin. On the left-hand side is the payer's identification, which is the payer's TIN. It's the 04358107. You can click outside the box on this one. It will auto-populate um, to State Street Retiree Services. Just make sure that everything is true and correct. Where mine is not. Um, so I have to go ahead and your guys' this shouldn't be either. You have to manually change it to the PO box. 5149, and then the zip code, which is 02206. And if you click out of it, it will change to Boston, Massachusetts. Here. Oh, sorry. Go ahead over. Oh, yeah, just like like I had mentioned before, just be careful with the auto population. It some of these are in there and there's different addresses and different areas that may be associated with the same ID number, but this specific one is to the one in Boston, Massachusetts. So we have to make sure the address is correct. <clears throat> so if you've gotten the address corrected, you're going to look on your right hand side. It says 1099R information. So you're basically doing the same fo thing, following the boxes. So it's 9300. If you click out of the box, it'll automatically put the taxable amount. Just make sure that taxable amount is correct in 2A. Sometimes it's a lower amount than the first one. Uh, go ahead and just keep on following so there's nothing in three, four, five, six. But we notice there's a distribution code. So code one means it's an early distribution. She is not retirement age. So she is going to be penalized for taking an early distribution. Anything with an asterisk is absolutely necessary to have, a little red asterisk, but if the boxes are filled in, they need to be on there, even if there's not a red asterisk. So there is no more boxes filled in. We do need to do the state. Like I had mentioned before, New York State has to be in there, and you have to put the ID number in there, which is 0434. Five eight one zero seven four, and there was no taxes withheld. You go. We're just waiting for people to catch up here. So I because the state isn't in there yet, ID numbers aren't transferring over, but typically it will when we're in your actual software because New York will already be put in there. So this is sort of kind of a little redundant right now, but they're working on the practice labs to get the states to um, go in the beginning. Yeah, which there's not. So you're going to go ahead and click down to the beginning, down to the bottom and hit continue. So this awesome 1099 R distribution penalty comes up because she's an early 
distribution. So this is a retirement plan. So you're gonna click that retirement plan. There is no circumstances. So the IRS allows if let's like, say um, you're going to school, they allow you to take out from your retirement plan to pay for a qualified tuition. And that will allow you to put in a, a form, I think it's 5329. That would be so you don't get a penalty because that's called a qualified early withdrawal. Health insurance one, medical benefits are one. And this year they've added if you're dying. If you are terminally ill and you would you would withdraw your entire retirement, let's say I have a couple of months to live, I have my retirement, they allow you to withdraw it without being penalized. That's called a qualified, like against your taxes. So you won't get that 10% or 25% um, code. Money out your own yep. Else. You can do that too. It's it's a qualified, it's qualified tuition, and it's a form that you can put in against that early distribution. Any qualified higher education, as long as they're a dependent on your tax return, you can. Go ahead and hit continue at the bottom. So it's gonna ask if this is a disaster retirement plan. And this is basically not really going to um, be applicable for 2023. This was because when COVID hit, a lot of people lost their jobs and they made, they forced them to take their retirement from that company. Um, the IRS did a thing where they spread it out over three years. So in this case, she took it in 2023. So this is automatically going to be no. This is more if you're doing back tax years, which is not a basic prepare. So you, you really don't have to be worried about that. Should bring you back to the main form here. And you're just going to hit continue for me again. And bring you back here. So let's say she had social security benefits. That's what I meant by it has multiple forms. And I have to do a lot of continuing. Social security would be on here as well. But you're going to go ahead and hit continue. Because she does not have one. So um, our next one is going to be your mortgage interest statement. I... They switched this around a little bit, so I'm not, I haven't done a ton of these, so I'm not entirely sure where they stuck it this year. Um, so I'm going to use that form finder. So we're going to go ahead and put 1098 right in there. You're going to see three forms that show up. Right now, we need that first one, the 1098 mortgage interest statement. This is also new this year. Do I have my mortgage interest statement in front of me? I'm going to put, obviously, yes. Is everybody here on this page? Okay. Are you there, Joy? So we're going to go ahead and click yes and hit continue. Bob, if you have any questions, you can, um, or you get a little lost, just let me know, you know, turn on your mic and I can hear you. So can I'm caught up. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Um. So the mortgage interest information should show up. This is what we don't know. We can't assume. So if the address on your 1099, your 1098 does not match the client's home address, this we're going to hit no, because this means it is a rental property and we do not do rental properties here, but it does here. It matches her address. So you're going to hit yes for this. For this scenario, you're going to hit yes. But just in case, I'm reiterating, if they hand you a 1098 and it does not have their home address on it, that means it's typically a rental property and that's we, we don't do that here. So it has to match their home address. You're going to go ahead and do the typical putting it in. It is manufacturers and traders for the lender's name. You're going to follow the boxes. 
simple data entry, box one is the 4200, it lines up. This form looks a little different, especially if you're re a returning preparer. So no other boxes are filled in, but under box six, you're gonna see address of property securing mortgage is the same as the payer's borrower's address. You're gonna click that for me because that means that it's the same address and you don't have to fill out box eight or box nine. But if you look in box 10, it has our taxes in there. You're gonna hit real estate taxes. You're gonna click on that little circle. You're gonna put that $3,460 right here. Now, a lot of you are gonna be like, oh, my standard deduction. For us, that's typical. But back before they had a standard deduction, um, you had to itemize your interest in your mortgage and your taxes. Now your standard deduction typically beats that out. But if you don't put this in, a lot of our clients get upset because the mortgage interest statement wasn't put in. So we just put it in just to make them feel better about it. You're going to go ahead and hit continue at the bottom and it's going to bring you back to that main page. You're going to hit continue again. So you're going to go to the side here and you're going to see that we have interest from a student loan. You're going to go into that awesome form finder again, and you're going to put 1098-E. And it says student loan interest statement. You're going to click on that for me. Your form finder is your best friend. If you can't find it through form finder, just ask questions. Go ahead. This is a practice lab. This is not an actual return. You cannot mess up your practice lab looking for things. So go ahead. This one, you don't have to have any of the information except for box one, the student loan. Just put that $3,500 in there. Um, the IRS, the federal government already has that information. They don't want it. So go ahead and just put that interest there. Hit continue. Because most of it is federally funded anyway, anyways for your college. So we're gonna go to the next page. And we see 1098T. You're going to go to that form finder again, put 1098-T. And tuition statement pops up. You're going to click on it. So we have to put in the who the student was. And in the scenario for this one, it was Claudia herself. So we're going to go ahead and hit Claudia which we also know based off from the student's name on the 1098T. So I said, did this student receive form 1099T from an educational institution for 2023? We are going to put yes. Did this student uh, have boxes two or seven checked? No, nothing was in box two or seven. We're gonna go ahead and hit continue. You're going to go ahead and put that institutional name, uh, Syracuse University. See the country in which it is, United States. Just go ahead and fill it right in. Zip code is 132.44. I click out and the employer's identification number, it's that EIN, 15053281. I'm gonna let everybody catch up. Just let me know when you guys have the addresses in. You guys are good. Go ahead and hit continue at the bottom of the page. <clears throat> so this is a little bit different. 
this year. And I love, I can't express how much I love this. So tuition paid is going to be box one on your 1098T. It's going to be the 6,600. But she paid out of pocket for hers for this scenario. But typically, in a real case scenario, box five is typically has a number in it. If you have box five with a number in it, that is going to go under grants if box five was filled in. This is typically for people who aren't paying out of pocket and have some type of student loans or something like that. And then other qualified expenses would be if you paid out of pocket that it wasn't included in your tuition and you paid out of pocket for qualified expenses like books, um, lab fees, stuff like that, that would go in other qualified expenses. You would just add it up and put it in there. But in this case, she did not have any of that. And she just had the tuition payment that she paid out of pocket. You're going to go ahead and hit continue for me. It should bring up this. Um, it would just, if she had other ones, I'll go back here into edit here. So let's say she did have the other qualified expenses. You're just going to put it in the third one. You wouldn't know that she has to bring it in physically. Like receipts, it won't be on that form. So like, let's say like for her, because she paid out of pocket, tuition might not have included like maybe a lab fee or a book. She went to the college. She would actually have to tell you, I paid this much for college books out of pocket. And that's where you would put it. It's also in that 4012, what is qualified and what is not qualified. Like parking passes for college are not qualified. A meal plan there, not qualified. Uh, housing, not qualified. It's actual like coursework. So we're going to hit continue. It should be up on this page. You're going to hit continue. This is why this year, not only after we get past this, if this is a, has the American Opportunity Tax Credit. So if we know she is going for her doctorate's degree. She's already claimed that she already has a bachelor's degree. She can no longer qualify for the American Opportunity Credit. So we're going to go ahead and say yes, because she's already claimed it on four previous tax returns. Was the student enrolled at least half year, which we know that she wasn't because it would be checked in box eight on your 1098T. So we're gonna go ahead and say no. Did this student complete the first four years of higher education, which we know she's going for a doctorate? It's, it's yes. Did this student have a drug felony conviction? These are questions that you may have to make a phone call. Most kids or people that are going for a doctorate don't have a felony drug conviction. So it's gonna be no. And another way that you can tell is if they have scholarships or grants in there, you can't get a scholarship or grant if you have a felony drug conviction charge in New York State. You have to pay out of pocket. And you're gonna hit continue for me. This is what's awesome about this program this year. It does the work for you. You, by Answering those questions, it tells you what you're available for and what your best credit is. Considering she's in her doctorate and she did more than four years, she can't claim the opportunity tax credit. Her best applicable tax credit is going to be the lifetime learning credit. You're going to click on that so it has a green check mark. And you're going to go ahead and hit continue. Now, let's say like she is available for the opportunity. It will highlight it green, automatically say recommended, but it will also show the lifetime learning credit. Some people, specifically if they feel like they're they're going to have more than four years to get a bachelor's, they're doing it in like a slow advance program, um, or maybe they failed a year, they'll choose to take the lifetime credit instead of the American Opportunity credit. I... I mean, I wouldn't do that. Um, it just depends on how you, how well you did on your taxes for that year and what's going to best benefit you and your tax liability. So it just depends. So we're going to go ahead and hit continue. I guess I'm bringing you out to the main page. 
if we remember correctly, because now we have no more forms, but we do. She had on the main page, she had child independent care. Mm -hmm. Typically you will get like a letter statement from that. But for our case here, it's on the front. So thankfully we're actually already in it. Credits, you're gonna see child and dependent care credit. Uh, the second one down, we're gonna hit begin. So she has two and we'll, we'll show you how to put two. But for the first one, it's for Abby and Angel. She paid the 24,000 to the Jewish community. Their ID number is on the front there. It's 15053910101. And we're going to go ahead and put in the um, name, which is the Jewish Community Center. So this is the Child Independent Care Credit address you mean oh it's too long if it's too long just delete out whatever you can to make it so it might be just jewish community that you need to put in there so five six five five thompson road so it's one three two one four and then I am going to wait for everybody to um, catch up here. Oh, the phone number. I need a phone number in there too. So if, if no phone number is provided, you need to reach out or go online and find the, the uh, phone number for that provider. I'm going to wait for everybody to catch up. Mm -mm. I just need uh, name, address, EIN, and then the phone number. Yep. Do we know or care if the provider is tax exempt? Um. So if they are tax exempt, you would click that button and it should say tax exempt when they come in. But for this case scenario, they're not. But let's say like it's... um. I don't know, like Head Start is tax exempt and they have like a daycare type thing through peace, that would be tax exempt. But um, if it doesn't say tax exemption with the number, I have to have their tax exempt number, then um, we would assume that they're not. Are you guys all caught up? Okay, go ahead and hit continue. So for, for, for them, it's Abby. We're going to click on Abby and um, Angel. And you're going to see two boxes pull up here. So because she paid $24,000, you are going to you have to tell the system how much she paid for each child. So it's not $24,000. You're going to split it in half because that was what she paid all year. So it's $12,000 for each child. <laughs> it's very expensive child care just so we're all in here so now because we have put it in and we've split it for the year between the two children you're going to go ahead and hit continue for me now we have one more she has marie she has the baby so we have to go up in the on, up here and it's going to say add a provider we have to do the same exact thing, but now we have to do it for Baskel. So you're gonna do the one six one four one seven five two six. That's the that's the tax ID number. It's Baskel Daycare. I think this is actually for the older one because Baskel's for older. I think it's an after school. Okay. It is. Now, remember, you are going to have a limitation on the provider's name, 
just put Baskell daycare, that's more than sufficient or Baskell. Um, the IRS will know based off from the EIN. So will the state um, who it belongs to. So the address there is 4160 Wetzel Road. And the zip code is 13090. It auto populates, just make sure it says Liverpool, New York. And then the provider's phone number is 315-564-9874. Why is this not typing? 9874, there we go. And you're going to hit that continue button again at the bottom when you uh, have the address in. And I will hold until everybody has the address and the IN number. Okay, you're gonna hit Marie. And Marie was paid all $7,200. I don't know where this woman sends these kids that cost, you know, $36,000 for the year, $37,000 for the year. Uh, <laughs> hey, that's some expensive daycare. So we're gonna go, now that you hit Marie, put the amount paid of the 7,200, Hit continue at the bottom. So that's where we're back to the main page. Hit continue for me again. So we have childcare questions and these are important. So did you receive any dependent care benefits from your employer? Some employers will pay you like a subsidy for childcare um, if it's offered. In this case, no, they, she didn't. Was she a full-time student or disabled? She was neither, so we're gonna hit no. And delay care payments, like did she um, pay, like she had leftover, like she was late in 2022 and she paid it in let's say February, or January, 2023. In this case, she didn't. Um, if there was and we put, yes, we have to put how much from 2022 went into 2023. Go ahead and hit continue. And it breaks down the eligible expenses and how much tax credit she's receiving for having that child care. So she's only allowed up to $6,000 in expenses for her three kids, but it is giving her a $1,200 uh, $1, tax credit towards her li tax liability. So we're going to go ahead and hit continue there. <clears throat> we also have one more thing because we're going to scroll down to the bottom and hit continue and it should bring us back here to deductions if we were in the beginning it said claudia made a donation by check of 250 dollars to the united way of central new york so you're going to see the third one right here itemized deductions it's going to say charitable contributions mortgage interest property taxes we're going to go ahead and add or edit because we are already in there. You're going to say gifts to charity right here. Hit begin. Is everybody there? Okay. The first one, cash gifts to charity. No. Okay. Thank you. Just being more aware. Yep. And we're going to just go ahead and fill in the charity name, United Way. Description, um, I don't know, uh, United Way of Central New York is uh, the Cash Coalition. I would just, it's United Way. Okay. Yeah, we'll just put Cash Coalition, cash coalition there, just put C-O-L-L -L and abbreviate it. Um, normally, most people will bring in like their church, what they donated to their church, and you would just put church there. Um, for this case scenario, um, just pick a day. I like to do like most people donate around Christmas. So if there's no date or there's multiple dates, I just pick 1231, 2023, or in this case it was once. So I picked 1224, 2023. Um, and then the thing of 250. And most people like it just is on there that they or they come in and say, Hey, I donated to this with this amount. 
um, unless it's from a church and then it's itemized, but typically part, not. Part of the test, we do not require the receipts and letters. Yeah. So the other thing I want to um, mention is this is more of a trust-based system here. If you tell me you donated, you know, $300 to um, United Way, but you don't bring in your receipt or your check, I have to go based off from what you say. But if you're audited and the government says, I want to see where that $300 went, you have to provide that proof. Not me, not anybody else but you. So now that we're out of there, we're going to go ahead and hit continue. We're going to hit continue and continue and unfortunately continue again and then continue because we're out of the deductions and it will say other taxes. <laughs> so once you're on that main page, another way that's awesome is on the left-hand side, we know that all of our forms are done right now. You're going to go and click on health insurance. This is a fast way to just bypass the rest of the pages because they they don't have anything to do with our tax return at the current moment. So this right here, this Affordable Care Act insurance plan, 1095A, is Obamacare. It's people who um, are the marketplace um, that people are more commonly known for, marketplace or Obamacare. If they don't have a 1095A, doesn't matter to us, just hit no. I don't need to see any health insurance besides a 1095A. So go ahead and hit continue. So typically your state is already added in the beginning of this return, but because the system is updating, we have to add it ourselves. So you're gonna hit add state return. Everybody's at state, okay. Choose your state and go ahead and go down to New York for me and then just hit continue. She was a full-time resident. You're gonna hit continue for me again. And we should be on a New York return. Everybody there? Okay. So because we need basic information, we're gonna go into there and hit edit for me. So if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a drop down that says county in which you reside. We live in Onondaga County, so you're gonna scroll down and hit Onondaga County. And we give preference to people here at Peace and other VITA sites in Onondaga County. During tax time, we typically don't do other counties. So it's you're typically only gonna see Onondaga County. We do have a few exceptions um, during tax time. Outside of tax time, because we're year round, we'll do any county. So <clears throat> it's gonna be that. So school district information, you're going to go ahead and get into that. And let's say you don't know the three-digit code. Because she lives in the school city school district area, Syracuse, we know her district is Syracuse. But here at Peace on that intake supplement form, we have county and school districts, so that's where you would look. But if you want, you can just type the code, the three-digit code 631. That is Syracuse School District. Hmm. I don't... <laughs> That three-digit code will help you guys just bypassing looking through the all of New York State schools. Six three one. So if you guys are all set with that, you can hit continue. And it's going to bring you back to that awesome page where we did the county already. You're going to scroll down and hit continue again, and it's going to bring you back to the main page. So we know, is everybody caught to the main page? Okay. So we know that she has star credit. So we need to go into what's called, uh, I think it's the item I, nope, it's the right one I was at. Credits, specific cre tax credits. Begin that for me. I will go back and show everybody again. It's right here, credits. Hit begin. So because she gets star, 
we are going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And you'll see this on your school property tax bill, which they bring in. If it has star on there, we, we do this form in state for them. It's called Real Property Tax Relief Credit, IT229. We're going to hit begin. Is everybody there? Okay. So were you a resident for all of 2023? Yes, we were. Did you occupy the same residence for six months? Yes. Was the property eligible for STAR, which we know it was? Yes. So this one's a little confusing. They're not, you're not getting rental income. They're asking you if you uh, resided in your own residence for that year, you have to put yes. I, it's a confusion question. If it's not rental property, it's yes. If that's where you live and we are out of scope. For. Yes, like I said before, we are out of scope for rental property. So, um, so residence information, we're gonna go ahead and hit begin. You're gonna say days that you resided in your property during 2023. 365, that's the days. The next one is the allotment, the allocation, 100%. You live there all year. You paid everything there all year. So we know her property taxes were the 3,000, um, what was it? 3,460. So that's where you're going to put that under real property taxes. And then the star amount credit that she received on her school taxes was the $680. So it's gonna say 365, 100, 3,460, you're gonna skip a box, do the 680. Now it says, is this residence the same as the federal tax return? You're gonna hit yes, because it is. <laughs> like I said, you can't do rental property and that's the only time, or maybe they have multiple residencies, but you should only be doing the residency in New York um, as a basic return. So you won't have to re worry about that too much. If you have filled out and yours looks like mine, you can go ahead and hit continue. We can hit continue again. And New York State loves their back back situation. So go ahead and hit back for me. We're gonna hit back again and it's gonna bring you back to your main page. Now we have officially done everything we needed to do in New York State for this tax return. We're gonna go ahead and hit exit New York return. <clears throat> Everybody on the side here, should see their adjust, her adjusted gross income, what she's receiving back from the federal state and what she is receiving back from New York state. Red means, or a negative, or I think on the practice lab, it's gray, um, means that she owes. In this case, she's getting refunds, so it's great. So does everybody's mat numbers match mine by any chance? Yeah. It should say 68013, then 4,677, and then 398. Uh, federal, right underneath that 68,000 sure. on the side. Okay, yeah. So talk about the future. Yeah, so unfortunately, if your numbers don't match, don't freak out, because we are having issues with Practice Lab. They are updating consistently and constantly, especially in the evening and on the weekends when we have to do these. Um, but know that the numbers are in right. And when you come here, it is not like that. Your tax return will be correct. Um, but I think they've pretty much caught up on them. I'm not entirely sure. We had like this... 40 page report. Um, so just bear with it. If it doesn't, you do know that we put the, the correct forms in and the forms do match what we have in the software. So go ahead and hit continue for me.
now we are at the 1040 or hit continue and then it'll bring you to the 1040. <clears throat> so what I want everybody to get in the, the, the practice of doing, cause this is, you're going to need this for your practice labs is there's a view print button up top. I want you to hit view print and it's going to generate a PDF. It takes a minute, so just bear with it. And then print your 2023 tax return. I just want you to go ahead and click on that for me. It should come up. Can you see can it can you see that, Bob? I know sometimes it doesn't come through. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the first couple of pages basically goes through um, what we've done to the tax return, who we've added. It explains, you know, what's on her W-2, um, 1099-R. I specifically want you to scroll down to page seven. So we can go from here. And if we read by lines, like I was saying on that basic return, I said 1040 line 12. This is where you're going to find your standard deduction, what, what she qualifies as a standard deduction. So she gets $20,800 as a standard deduction, which comes off her tax liability in her case. If you continue to, let's say, we go to, we subtract that out of the 68,013, which is her adjusted gross income, her taxable liability through the IRS before we do any other things is $47,213. If we go to page eight, we will see that she had her tax should be $5,000. $353. If we keep going, she gets a tax credit of $2,833. And if we go down to the bottom, if we keep going, after her deductions of child tax credit and stuff, she should have paid $930. So if we read, so payments, federal income, W-2. 2440 she that's what she her estimated taxes are for the year that's what she should have paid now we know based off from her w2 that's what she paid we're going to go down here and see the additional child tax credit if you go to so you add those so she she paid the 2440 you add the 3167 so we get the 5607. So she overpaid by $4,677 because her liability for taxes, based off from her adjusted gross income, her head of household payments and stuff, was only $930 for federal for that year. Does that make sense? We can go over it afterwards because that's her total tax that she should have paid. So she overpaid in taxes based off from her credits, based off from her AGI. That's why she's getting, she's why she's getting such a large refund back. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead. And I want you to go down to, I got to find the page in a second here. I believe it is... I just have to find New York State, 31. This gives you resident, the New York State tax part of it. So we'll see daughter, all her children, that she's had a household. Her, if you go to page 32, it's sort of kind of the same. Now, state doesn't give you as many awesome tax credits as the federal government does. So a little bit will be um, different. So her federal adjusted gross income <clears throat> was the 68,013. They will do that for New York State <laughs> as well. Their standard deduction of 11,2. 
the taxable income for near and dependent exemptions is the uh why does that say three thousand? I'm not sure. That's okay. Um, the taxable income here should be fifty three thousand eight hundred and thirteen dollars. That is what New York State says she should have paid taxes on. So it's a little bit higher than the federal government. Their standard deduction isn't as high as the federal government says. So we see that she paid on page 33 that her taxable income is the 53,813. She got um, New York state tax that she paid is 2,712, I believe it was. Should be that. No, it's 1,200. That didn't come through, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it should be 1200. I'm not entirely sure as to why it's it it didn't come through properly, but it should be 12. I have 2712. You do. So it at, at, the state seems to be messing up the most through this. So just bear with me um on that. Again, it's this is a new vendor they're using, so um they haven't gotten all the updates. Yeah. Yet, so it, it's right here. Sorry so for the frustration. The seventy-two dollars the New York State tax withheld is twelve hundred. So they might have switched the yeah New York State tax online. So two thousand seven hundred and twelve state tax use or sale voluntary contributions. That shouldn't that's not coming up right, Ralph. I don't know why it's not coming up right. It's okay. I'll figure it out later. Um. So. When we look at page 34, you're going to see Empire State Child Tax Credit 900. She got a child to pair dependent care credit, which means she paid daycare of nine. They gave her a credit as well of $900. She paid state tax withheld the $1,220. So she did a total payment of $3,110 based off of her taxes and what she paid. So the amount overpaid based off from is $398. I think that's, they switched it around a little this year so that you would take the 3110 based off from 60 through three through uh, 75 and subtract it from the, two th the 2,712 and you'll get the 398 overpayment. They just broke it down a little. They changed it a little bit this year. So that's something new for me as well. Mm -hmm. They are constantly updating it. So we're going to have to go in um, the the, 10, the 1040 that is um, attached to this practice lab. It might be off a little because they're in there playing with things. I can literally get in in the morning and it's back to my original 1040 that's attached to the practice lab. It's not convenient. Yeah, we did the practice lab before they did updates and then they did updates yeah. and then they, it's a little weird. So I do apologize, but that is how you see tax payments and their refund for New York State. If you go ahead and click out of that, oh, I clicked out of the whole thing. So just click out of the... Thing. Oh no, I don't know which one I'm in because I've done these 800. twice. Yeah, 800. Where's oh, they're all zeros, 800. Zero, zero, I think I did right here. There we go. I know that's why I did it differently. Mm -hmm. So you'll see I had a ton there, unfortunately. <clears throat> did did you click it? It kicked her out too. Okay, so you can log in. Nope, that's not the same oh, one. She has to go back to and do the whole train pro web thing again. It takes you to tax layer pro. Did it kick anybody else out? No. Okay. So I'm going to hit continue. You should be at this page. You're at this page. Just hit continue. Okay. It kicked us out, some of us out. Yeah, when you make sure when you're you're look if you're looking at the W um the 1040. Um, just make sure you're clicking off the that X, not the whole X. Yeah, just that X. I clicked out of the whole X by accident. That's all right. We do that all the time. <laughs> but it's really simple. You saw I just go back to client search and 
just find who you were in and you can just hit select and you get right back where you are and it's perfect. Um, so you should be on return details. You're just going to go into that federal return, how she wants it. We're going to say e-file paper check because she stated she wanted a paper check. Same with state. E-file paper check. Now you're going to see a taxpayer's pin at the bottom here. I need that taxpayer's pin and I'll tell you why. So you, for a single person, you can just copy that number. But if you have a married couple, I need the taxpayer and the spouse's pin. So write it down if there's more than one. So you're gonna just copy that 18000. We've also found out that they just add a one in front of the last four of their social security number. So if you forget, you can just do one in their last four of their social. Right here, this taxpayer's pin. Nope, just keep it the same, just copy it. Copy that number. Nope, I'll show you how to do it in a minute. Just copy it for me for right now. This will be used at a later date. All right, you should be at the fee summary. This means nothing for us. We're a free site, but should if you were a paid preparer, this is where you would put your fees and stuff in, but we are not. We are completely free. So we're going to go ahead and hit continue. <clears throat> we require state ID. You need to have a valid photo ID. For these practice labs, unfortunately, you know, we don't have that in there, but this is where you would put the driver's license in for spouse and if there's a spouse or for the person, if they don't have a driver's license, and so let's say like they have a sheriff's ID, um, that's where this is gonna go. If they don't have a driver's license or a state ID, and like in this case, we're gonna hit no driver's license or state ID. Are we okay? So you're just gonna go past the fee summary, just hit continue and we're here. Typically, you need a driver's license, but we don't have one for this scenario. So you're going to hit no driver's license or state ID. So they took out the one thing. So typically, the reason that that PIN number that I had you copy, after the state ID, there's a page that comes up and it was basically what they signed here verbally in does it? Yeah. Well, we'll see. Just hit continue after this one. Hit continue after the custom credit. No, it doesn't. They took it out completely. Wow. Um, so that 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 number that I had you copy, there's gonna be a form that comes up that um basically if you scroll down to the bottom, it'll say, Do you have the the payer's uh PIN number? You have to say yes to it. Put that number in there, that 1800, and the date. If you don't, I can't e file their tax return because it saves, it basically says that I can keep certain information in my computer in the software for three years. So that way, when you come back next year, I can pull forward like your dependents or anything like that. Um, so we're basically at the submission page. Your tax return is done. The only thing that I ask and we ask here at Peace is you scroll down here. We actually have, you're going to mark this, mark tax return ready for review. And there should be one also here. We make our own ta return tags and they will also... Um, be able for you to view, put ready for review or missing information or state only. If they're only filing for that state credit, that's where you would do it. And then we are done and we can save and exit. But here, we will walk you through as many tax returns as you need us to sit with you and feel comfortable. We're not going to throw you to the wolves and just expects you to do a tax return all on your own. That's just not how we are here. We're a team, we do everything together. Is there any questions? Bob? <clears throat> I 
None of us yeah. going to reach us. We don't want a culture to reach us. Oh, yeah. yeah. All the questions. Wait, where we're we're time. Yeah. Because so of quirkiness. Ralph was just talking to us about reminding you guys before you take your actual test, not the one that you put in your book, you write in, before you actually go in to um, Link and Learn, take the test, to reach out to Sharon, myself, or Ralph to look over those answers, like I had said in the beginning, before you take that test, because these practice labs are being a little wonky. Um, I want to make sure that you guys have the correct answers. I tested before they updated it. So what I have is true and correct. So any uh -huh. questions? For Ralph, I assume Claudia Cardinelli married Rufus after she was married to Andy Williams. <laughs> well, yeah, it's you a got scenario. me on that one. I don't know if she got married after that. You got me on that one. Okay. And also, do we have to enter a bunch of little itemized deductions like the 250 to United Way, even if it's obvious they're going to end up using the standard deduction? Yes. And I'm only saying that because we have a lot of clients here that will get upset if they don't see it. That's the only reason because it goes, it's not like before where it actually took off your tax liability. It ends up coming in the back end now and it doesn't do anything. Your standard outbeats it. But like before, I think two years ago, it actually took the 300 off your tax liability. It no longer does that. So, but our clients still want to see it in there. I, th I think that it's, I think that's charitable deduction was just for a couple of years during the pandemic. Yes, true. Oh, and the other thing is, is like, depending on how much they donated, you, they may not be able to itemize on federal, but they might be able to itemize on state. So it just depends on like their donation amount, but $300 is not really going to take over their standard in state. But let's say, you know, you're a, a personal preparer, or like if in your case, if you donated, let's say like $6,000 to the children's Golisano unit that year, you might be able to itemize that on the state, but you can't on the federal. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. We can put that in. We just didn't put it in. Sorry. Yeah. We missed it. I I have a um I have kind of a rule that I kind of like it's mine. Hold on a second for this one. I kind of do check marks on things because there's all copies. It's gonna be in the yeah. folder and and you're you're gonna want to look at your yellow form first, you know, kind of summer review yeah. it, look at the forms you have, make sure you have everything you need. I kind of like as I go through, okay, I did that W-2. Yeah. I did that W-2. I did that 1099. It's kind of my way of double checking that I got everything in there. Yep. Did you want something? That's okay. Anything else? I'm going to stop this okay. and thank you. Um, I think we're, did we talk about going to the website now? Yeah. Okay. Yep. We're all done. All right. Thanks, Bob. I'm just going to stop recording, but we'll still be on. So hold on a second.